Hey you guys, welcome to my channel, Nursing with Key, where I make a whole bunch of nursing related videos, sharing tips and tricks that I've learned along my journey to help you have the smoothest nursing journey. So for those of you who are already subscribed to my channel, welcome back, gang. And for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you won't miss a video from me again. My name is Kiara Selena. I am 22 years old. I am a new grad pending licensed nurse. I recently graduated from the licensed practical nursing program here in Canada. That is a two-year program. I started in the year of January 2017 and recently graduated in the month of June 2019. Um, I do have some past medical experience. My very first job in the medical field, I was 17 years old. I was working in pharmacy. And um, at that job, my responsibility was to take medication requests from people and call the providers to get verbal authorizations for those medications. I also worked as a home care aide after that. And once I became CPR, CPR certified in nursing school, I got two jobs, one as a certified nursing assistant in long-term care and another job as as a CNA or a PCT patient care technician in acute care in a hospital where I still work. So I do have quite a bit of um, experience in the medical field and um, I have done my fair share of interviews. For those of you who don't know, who haven't seen um, my previous video on how to get a job uh, as a new grad, I was able to land myself two nursing jobs, one in acute care and one in long-term care, only two weeks after graduating from nursing school. So I was able to get those two jobs as a pending licensed nurse. Unfortunately, I had to let one go because I already had another job and I just couldn't handle the stress of having three jobs, but I was able to ace both of those interviews and get a call back. And with that being said, I think that even though I am still a baby in the nursing field to some of you guys, like I said, I have had my fair share of interviews and I think that that makes me qualified to maybe not give you the very best tips, but definitely give you some tips that will for sure help you increase your chances of getting your first nursing job at your nursing interview. So if you are interested, stay tuned. So in my opinion, one of the very first things that you should do when you land your interview, when your interviewer calls you and tells you that they want to see you, you need to dress professionally. So once you get that call, if you know that your closet is empty, if you know that you don't have anything, go do a little bit of shopping. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube that give you like outfit ideas for interviews, but you really wanna dress professionally. So maybe wear a white button up like this. This one is not really ironed too well. So make sure you iron your stuff, but get a nice button up or a nice um, black skirt, um, not too tight or anything like that. Stay away from big, big earrings. Stay away from heavy cakey makeup or like really bright lipstick. Don't go to your interview with green lipstick or, or you know, I don't know, orange lipstick. Try to stay neutral, try to stay professional. Some small earrings like this or some very, very small hoop earrings, but you wanna dress professionally, right? They are judging you based on appearance. Obviously, everything else, like everything else that you're gonna present on your resume, obviously is very important, but the first thing they're seeing is you and the way you present yourself is very, very important. So dress professionally, do a little bit of shopping. My next tip is to be prepared, be prepared. There are certain questions that are generic that you are going to get asked no matter where you go. Everybody that I know who is in a nursing field, whether a CNA, PCT, a nurse, LPN, RN, no matter who, everybody gets this question. There's a 99% chance that you're gonna get this question. And one of the most famous or one of the most popular questions is uh, goes something like this. They'll ask you to describe a time where you had to work under pressure and how did you handle it? Or describe a time where um, you had a disagreement with a coworker and how did you handle it? Another really, really popular question is why did you choose to become a nurse? Why did you choose nursing? What made you want to get into the medical or the nursing field? So keep those questions in mind. I'm not saying that you really have to, I don't know, like create a script and memorize it. You know, you want it to kind of come naturally, but try to Think of a really good situation that you think your interviewer is going to be really impressed with. Keep that in the back of your mind just in case you get that question at the interview. 
Now, my other tip is to study. And you guys are probably wondering, what do you mean study? Now, this may not apply to everybody else because a lot of people like to come and say that it's not, that the things that I say are not true because they don't apply to them. Certain things may not apply to you, but this is my experience. I can only speak for myself and what I have experienced. I cannot speak for everybody else. But one of the things that you might get asked is this because this is what I experienced myself. Now, the interviewer, both of my interviewers actually for the nursing jobs asked me some very basic questions about some um, very popular disorders that you see in the field a lot. And one of the disorders that my interviewer spoke to me about was diabetes. So she asked me to describe what the difference between type one, type two, type three diabetes is, what medications are used for the treatment of um, diabetes. So, you know, you have Genuvia or Citagliptin, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, you have metformin slash glucophage. You also have insulins. Um, you have insulin N, you have of, um, I mean humulin N, you have humulin R, you have all these different types of, um, of medications that are used for the treatment of diabetes. And then she asked me about the administration order of insulin. So you have to remember registered nurse, RN, it always ends in RN. If you are unable to remember the order of administration, always remember that it's registered nurse at the end. So N, R, R, N. We know that R is rapid acting insulin. Rapid acting is always clear. And humulin N is, uh, or N is cloudy. So always remember that it's cloudy, clear, clear, cloudy, right? So you put your ear in your cloudy, you put your ear in your rapid, you you pull from your rapid and then you pull from your cloudy. That is the administration order for insulin. Always remember that. That is one thing that I was asked. Also, she asked me a trick question about Lantus and mixing Lantus. Always remember that Lantus cannot be mixed in the same syringe with any other insulin. Don't let anybody trick you. Don't mess up your interview because of that. Lantus cannot be mixed. Lantus is a big no, no. Another question she asked me about was angina. And we know that the signs and symptoms for angina are very similar to the symptoms of an MI. And she will ask you about what can be done for angina. So we know that there are patches, but there's also sublink tabs, sorry, that you can give um, to aid with chest pain if somebody has angina. And they will ask you, if they do ask you about angina, they're mostly gonna ask you about how many times and in what span of time you can give the, uh, the sublinks. And it is three times in the span of 15 minutes. So you can give one tab every five minutes, three times, no more than 15 minutes. And if you work in a residence, um, you have to call 911. So remember that if you're getting an interview at, an, at a residence, you have to call 911 if you give someone nitro three times and it does not work. If you work in a hospital, obviously it's going to be different because a hospital is equipped for situations like that, but residences are not. And lastly, for the residents that I got an interview at, a very, very popular question is what you're going to do if somebody falls. Now we know that a lot, a lot of the elderly have history of CVAs, have histories, a uh, history of um, high cholesterol and a whole bunch of different cardiac issues. And so most of them are on aspirin. They get a baby aspirin, 80 mg's every single day, or a lot of them are on Coumadin or other anticoagulants. And if they fall, they are at risk for hemorrhaging. So they're going to ask you, what are the steps you are going to take if somebody in the residence falls? As a nurse, what are you gonna do for that person? What are you gonna look for? So you know you're gonna, you know, look for, you know, you're gonna check LOCs and make sure that, you know, there is no signs that this person may have hit their head if there's any fluid coming out of the ears out of the nose that's a sign of some type of head injury um, you're going to look for bleeding you're going to look for pain you're going to look for any uh, limbs fingers arm uh, fingers arms legs anything that looks twisted or looks abnormal and you're gonna check vitals and there's you're gonna do your whole head-to-toe assessment before you decide whether or not you're going to keep the person or send the person now there are some residents that have a protocol that for every fall they get sent off to the hospital but some um, hospitals don't have that protocol and you know it's up to you and based on your judgment your assessment whether or not you're going to send them to the hospital. So just freshen up on um, those things. 
My next tip is to get there early, especially if you're going into a very, very big uh, facility. A lot of hospitals are big. They have a bunch of different sections and it could be hard to kind of find your way around the hospital if you're not familiar with that place. So get there very, very early because even if you're there, let's say you arrive to the facility 15 minutes early, but you don't know how to find your way to the office where the interview is taking place. It could take you sometimes 20 minutes to find that place and then you're late and you have to kind of explain to your interviewer why you're late and it's not a good look on the first day that you're meeting this person that you're meeting your uh, future employer so make sure that you get there extremely early so that you can find your way to the office and even if you find your way to the office you could still be at the office early so that the secretary can call the person and let them know it's a very good look when the secretary calls and your employer or your future employer or your interviewer sees that you are um, a couple minutes early so try to get there as early as possible so my very next tip is to just be yourself be yourself I know that in the beginning when I first started going to job interviews and stuff it was really difficult for me to be myself because I think that a lot of people ex think that the interviewers kind of expect us to be these perfect human beings but that is not the case right if you're just a funny person if you're a laid-back person if you're a goofy person just be that it is a lot easier for you to be yourself than be something you're not because once you start pretending that's when you start making mistakes that's when you start um, you know kind of glitching <laughs> glitching in a way and that is when you start to kind of screw up your interview so just Take a deep breath and go in there and be yourself. And my last tip is to ask questions. I always make sure that I ask at least two questions in the interview. It just makes you seem a little bit more interested in my opinion. Um, but if you're shy, it doesn't have to be anything major. Um, most of the people who interview nurses for nursing jobs are also nurses. So you can in turn ask them what made them choose nursing or what their story was like. You know, kind of switch, <laughs> flip the script on them a little bit. Ask them what a day in their life is like as a head nurse or as a coordinator as a whatever it doesn't have to be like I said it doesn't have to be anything major but just to make yourself seem a little bit more interested and um, a little bit more what's the word can't think of another word but yeah just to make yourself seem a little bit more interested ask a very tiny question um, interviewers are usually very happy when you ask them questions they love to talk a lot of them and uh, it just it's just a good look Anyways, guys, I know that there's so many other tips that you can follow. I don't have all the answers. Like I said, I'm still a baby to the nursing field. I still have a lot to learn. But these are some tips that I have used for myself. And I really, really hope that this video helped you. Like I said in the beginning, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss another video from me. And if you have not checked out my video on how I got my first nursing job only two weeks after graduating, from nursing school as a new grad pending licensed nurse make sure you click on the link somewhere up here i'm also going to leave it in the end card at the end of the video check that out and i hope to see you in my next video bye if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you do so and turn on your notification bell so you won't miss another video from me again also make sure you check out from.zyomes on instagram to get your art done now